do you think consciousness is fundamentally uh, computational? So uh, when you think about CX, mm -hmm. what can be turned to computation? And you're thinking about LLMs. Do you think the uh, the display of consciousness and the experience of consciousness, the hard problem, is is fundamentally uh, a computation? Yeah, what it feels like inside, so to speak, yeah. is you know I, I I did a little exercise. Eventually, I'll I'll post it of uh, you know what it's like to be a computer. Yeah, right. It's kind of like well, you get all the sensory input. You have a, kind of the way I see it is from the time you boot a computer to the time the computer crashes yes. is like a human life. You, you're building up a certain amount of state in memory. You remember certain things about your quotes life. Eventually, it's kind of like the the uh, you know the next generation of humans is is born from the same genetic material, so to speak, with a little bit left over left on the disk, so to speak. Yes. Um, and then you know the 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 new fresh generation starts up, yeah. and eventually all kinds of crud builds up in the in the memory of the computer, and eventually the thing crashes or whatever, or maybe it has some trauma because you plugged in some weird thing to some port of the computer, and that made it crash, and that um, uh, you know that that's kind of but but you have this this picture of you know from from startup to 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 shut down. You know, what is the life of a computer, so to speak? And what does it feel like to be that computer? And what inner thoughts does it have? And how do you describe it? And it's kind of kind of interesting as you start writing about this to realize it's awfully like what you would say about yourself. That is, it's awfully like even a, an ordinary computer, forget it, all the AI stuff and so on. You know, it's kind of, it has a memory of the past. It has certain sensory experiences. It can communicate with other computers, but it has to package up how it's communicating in some kind of language like form so it can you know send so it can kind of map what's in its memory to what's in the memory of some other computer mm. it's it's a surprisingly similar thing you know i had an experience just a week or two ago i i had uh, i'm a collector of all possible data about myself and other things and so i you know i collect all sorts of weird medical data and so on and one thing i hadn't collected was i'd never had a whole body mri scan so I went and got one of these. Nice. Okay, so I get the, get all the data back, right? I'm looking at this thing. I'd never looked at the kind of insides of my brain, so to speak, um, in in physical form. And it's really, I mean, it, it's kind of psychologically shocking in a sense mm -hmm. that you know, here's this thing, and you can see it has all these folds and all these, you know, the structure. And it's like that's where this experience that I'm having of, you know, right existing there. and so on. Yeah. That's where it is, and you know, it feels very. You know, you, you look at that and you're thinking, how can this possibly be all this experience that I'm having? And you're realizing, well, I can look at a computer as well. And it's it's kind of this, uh, it, 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 I think this idea that you are having an experience that is somehow, um, you know, transcends the mere sort of physicality of that experience. I, 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 I you know, it's something that's hard to come to terms with, but I think, you know, and I, I don't think I've necessarily, you know, my my personal experience, you know, I look at the, you know, the MRI of the brain, and then I, you know, know about all kinds of things about neuroscience and all that kind of stuff. And I still feel the way I feel, so to speak. And it, it sort of seems disconnected. But yet, as I try and rationalize it, I can't really say that there's something kind of different about how I intrinsically feel from the thing that I can plainly see in the sort of physicality of what's going on. So do you think the computer, a large language model, will experience that transcendence? How does that make you feel? I, mean, I, I tend to I believe think, it will. I think an ordinary computer is already there. I yeah. think an ordinary computer is already, you know, kind of, it's, it's, now a large language model may experience it in a way that is much better aligned with us humans. That is, it's much more, you know, if you could, have the discussion with the computer, its intelligence, so to speak, is not particularly well aligned with ours. But the large language model is, you know, it's built to be aligned with our way of thinking about things. It would be able to explain that it's uh, afraid of being shut off and deleted. It'd be able to say that it's sad of the way you've been speaking to it over the past two right. days. But you know, that's a weird thing because when it says it's afraid of something, yeah. right? 
we know that it got that idea from the fact that it read on the internet. Yeah, where did you get it, Stephen? Where did you get it when you say you're afraid? You are quite. That's the question, yeah. right? I mean, it's it's your parents, um, your friends, right? Or or my biology. I mean, in other words, there's a certain amount that is, you know, the endocrine system kicking in, and and you know the the um, uh, these kinds of emotional overlay type things that happen to be that are actually much more physical, even they're much more sort of straightforwardly chemical than. The, the, then kind of all of the higher level thinking. Yeah, but your biology didn't tell you to say, I'm afraid, just at the right time when people that love you are listening, and so you know you're manipulating them by saying so. That's not your biology, that's No, like, that's a, well, but the, you know. It's a large language to, model in that biological neural network of yours. Yes, but I mean the intrinsic thing of, you know, something sort of shocking is just happening, and you have some sure. sort of reaction, which is you know some neurotransmitter gets secreted, and it, it's some um, uh, you know that that is the beginning of some you know that is that's one of the pieces of input that then drives. It's kind of like the uh, uh, like a prompt for for the large language model. I mean, just like when we dream, for example, you know, no doubt there are all these sort of random inputs. They're kind of these random prompts, and then it's percolating through in kind of the way that a large language model does of kind of putting together things that seem meaningful. I mean, are you, um, are you worried about this world where you, you teach a lot on the internet and there's people asking questions and comments and so on. Uh, you have people that work remotely. Um, are you worried about this world when um, large language models create human like bots that are leaving the comments, asking the questions, or might even become fake employees. Yeah. I mean, or or, or uh, worse or better yet, friends, friends of yours. Right, look, I mean, one point is, my mode of life has been I build tools and then I use the tools. Yeah. And in a sense, <laughs> kind of, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. building this tower of automation, yes. which, you know, and, and in a sense, you know, when you make a company or something, you are making, sort of automation, but it has some humans in it, yes. but also as much as possible, it has, it has uh, you know, computers in it. And so I think it's sort of an extension of that. Now, now if I really didn't know that, um, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a funny question. I mean, it's a, it's a funny issue when, you know, if we think about sort of what's going to happen to the future of kind of jobs people do and so on, and there are places where kind of having a human in the loop, there are different reasons to have a human in the loop. Mm -hmm. For example, you might want a human in the loop because you want somebody to, be, you want another human to be invested in the outcome. You know, you want a human flying the plane who's going to die if the plane crashes along with you, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that gives you sort of confidence that the right thing is going to happen. Or you might want, you know, right now, you might want a human in the loop in some kind of sort of human encouragement, persuasion type profession. Mm -hmm. Whether that will continue, I'm not sure for those types of professions, because it may be that the the greater efficiency of uh, you know of being able to have sort of just the right information delivered at just the right time will overcome the kind of the 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 kind of oh yes I want a human there. Yeah, imagine like a, a therapist or even higher stake uh, like a suicide hotline operated by a large language model. Yeah. Oh boy, it's a pretty high stake situation. Right, but I mean, but you know, it might in fact do the right thing. Yeah. Because it might be the case that that um, you know, and that's really partly a question of uh, sort of how complicated is the human. You know, one of the things that's that's always surprising in some sense is that you know sometimes human psychology is not that complicated in some sense. You wrote the blog post.